The Samsung Galaxy S24 is a great choice for Android fans with exceptional battery life, top-notch performance and a sleek design that can stand up to some abuse. It's got almost enough features to be called Ultra instead packed into a smaller phone that's easy to pocket and use one-handed. It has all the new Galaxy AI and Google Circle to search features as well as Samsung's aging and overcomplicated software. The cameras aren't as great as some competitors in this range but it has more zoom than the iPhone 15 and Samsung gives you plenty of cool shooting modes to make your pics look great. With a promising of 7 years of Android updates, this could be the best affordable Galaxy S phone Samsung has offered in quite a while. The Galaxy S24 is priced as expected and it's a bit less expensive in the UK than last year's phone. You still get the same 128GB of storage except in Australia where Samsung starts this phone at 256GB and offers a higher capacity 512GB model. The extra storage is worth buying since the cameras on the S24 are good enough that you could fill it up with photos and videos. Samsung always seems to have deals available for Galaxy S phones, whether that's doubling the storage for free or offering a bonus on your trade. In the US, Samsung will give you at least $100 for any phone you trade, which effectively knocks the price to $699 US dollar for almost everybody. At that price, the Galaxy S24 is a bit cheaper than the Apple's iPhone 15 and closer to the Google Pixel 8 or OnePlus 12 with a similar trade offer. Unless you are a serious camera hound or you want a much bigger display, there is no reason to spring for the Galaxy S24 Ultra instead. It's a massive price jump that doesn't equate to a big performance boost. Sure, the Ultra is a bigger phone with a bigger battery inside, so it lasts a bit longer, but otherwise performance is very similar when you are playing games or running intense apps like Adobe Lightroom or photo editing. The Galaxy S24 is a great value compared to the competition at this price. It's far more powerful than the Google Pixel 8 and 2. Both phones come with a promise of 7 years of Android updates. It's easier to invasion the Galaxy S24 lasting until 2031, while I can't imagine a Pixel 8 that's capable of anything in 7 years. Compared to the iPhone 15, you certainly get a lot more with the Galaxy S24, including a real zoom lens and a much bigger battery, but the experience is entirely different. Apple phones work best when you know more people with Apple phones, so if all of your friends are on iPhone, it may be worth getting a phone with iOS 17 so you can name drop and blue bubble all you like. Apple phones also tend to hold their value better than Android phones too, that gap is closing every year. The Galaxy S24 may be the best model of the family but it's no slouch in the terms of specs. It has the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor that makes the Galaxy S24 Ultra blazing fast and it has more camera option and a bigger battery than a comparable iPhone 15. The display is also better than other phone size, it's brighter than even the Pixel 8 with better color accuracy as well. The Samsung Pendulum sways back and forth between copying Apple and striking out on its own. This year, the Galaxy S24 is much closer to the iPhone 15 design than it has been in many years while the S24 Ultra looks just a bit more unique. It's the curve at the corners of the display that really bring home the similarity. The Galaxy S24, like an iPhone, is well-rounded at the corners while the S24 Ultra is all right angles. This is not a terrible thing, it just isn't very unique. At least Samsung has some nice colors this year. My review unit came in the cobalt violet color which is very pretty but a little sad like the stormy purple Apple once used on its iPhone. More vibrant are the sandstone orange and amber yellow options. I wish they were a bit more saturated and prime but they do look natural with a nice matte finish and texture to the back glass. 
The glass is unfortunately Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which was the best of the best last year, but now we have seen Gorilla Armor on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and it's hard to settle for less. My Galaxy S24 review unit already has a scratch on the back glass and I don't have a case for this phone yet. Gorilla Armor is more scratch resistant and Samsung has done a great job reducing reflections and glare but only on the Ultra model. Samsung still does a great job keeping its phones thin and light. This is no Ultra and if you want a phone you can use with one hand, the Galaxy S24 is a great option. It's thinner than the iPhone or Google Pixel and it's also the lightest of the bunch. Usually, a lighter phone means less battery insight, but the Galaxy S24 beats all competitors for battery life, so it's not a concern. Samsung is a perennial favorite when it comes to smartphone displays and the Galaxy S24 is no disappointment, but it also isn't the clear winner in any aspect. I enjoyed reading web pages, playing games and editing photos on the smaller screen and even small text was legible and sharp. The screen was also plenty bright even in outdoor sunlight taking photos with the camera. Samsung is not giving us the sharpest display with the Galaxy S24 and it's odd for the company to fall behind a bit. The Google Pixel 8 and iPhone 15 both have a higher pixel density, making them technically sharper too. You might not notice the difference. The Galaxy S24 can get brighter than both of those phones, but OnePlus is pulling some 4500 nit magic out of its hat with the similarly priced OnePlus 12. So, Samsung isn't the resounding brightness winner. Overall, I had no complaints about the display unless I'm truly nitpicking. In our official lab tests, the Galaxy S24 had a wider color gamut than any competitor. Samsung is still sticky about Dolby Vision HDR support, which is what Netflix favors, but HDR 10 Plus content looks great and you can find that on every other major streamer. While I like carrying a smaller phone, the 6-inch display on the Galaxy S24 isn't quite big enough to hold all of Samsung's features. The H panel is turned on by default and it takes up so much room on the side of the phone that it was easy to swipe it open accidentally when I just wanted to use a back swipe gesture. The quick panel also became more complex and this makes it harder to read and use on the smaller Galaxy S24 display than it was on larger Samsung screens. Overall, more software simplicity would help show off that screen instead of bogging it down with icons and menu clutter. The good news about software on the Galaxy S24 is that it can do just about everything the Galaxy S24 Ultra can do, short of using the S Pen. The bad news is that it can do everything the Galaxy S24 Ultra can do and no less. Every bit of complexity often designed for the largest smartphone display possible is still present in the Galaxy S24. It's a mess. The Galaxy S24 is super powered, there is no doubt. There are big software features like Samsung DeX, which gives you a Chromebook-like interface when you plug your phone into an external monitor. There are also fine granular controls over everything from battery and power management to Wi-Fi and networking to screen response and menus too. Well, everything. There is no end to what you can do with the Galaxy S24 and it is easy to get very lost. Samsung needs to simplify. There are too many features that are impossible to find, like wireless power sharing, which should let me charge my earbuds by setting the case on top of my Galaxy S24. Unfortunately, I can't find the button to make this happen, not without a treasure map and a pickaxe. The software problems are starting to feel like laziness. In setting up my Galaxy S24, I was excited when my older Samsung phone found the new S24 quickly and offered to transfer all of my stuff. This process quickly failed without warning and I had to repeat it. After it failed, the second time I was asked on another screen to use Samsung Smart Switch, which somehow worked. Why not just start there? 
the first time I turned on the Galaxy S24, I needed to update a ton of apps in the Google Play Store and the updates failed, then disappeared. I opened the Galaxy App Store and found a slew of updates there as well, even though there was no notification. My Galaxy was suddenly downloading strange Samsung software including a blockchain manager. I don't use anything blockchain at all. Then there are all the apps. There are too many apps from Samsung, too many apps from Google and somehow even Microsoft gets its own folder on a Samsung phone running a Google operating system. Good job Microsoft. I hope it got what it paid for. All of this just feels lazy or cynical or both. It doesn't feel like Samsung has my best interest at heart from the moment I start using the Galaxy S24. It feels like the software is pushing me to do more, to buy more and use more. I just want simplicity. I just want it to work. Shoot, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is our top camera phone, but that doesn't mean the Galaxy S24 is a slouch. Most of the great work Samsung has done improving its image processing carries through here. Photos I shot with the Galaxy S24 look better, more natural than photos taken with either the Galaxy S23 or my iPhone 15. You also get a real zoom lens with the Galaxy S24 and it helps a great deal. Having a real 3x zoom brings you closer to the field on the stage even if the zoom lens is paired to a awfully small sensor that produces images with more noise and blur than I'd like. No matter neither the Pixel 8 nor the iPhone 15 has optical zoom around back and real zoom is always better than digital zoom all things being equal. You might occasionally get better shots from the main camera on the iPhone 15 and the Google Pixel 8 does a better job with low light images but the Samsung Galaxy S24 is much more versatile. I actually find Samsung's different camera modes like the food mode or the dual camera video recording mode to be fun and useful. My baked goods look detectable when I shoot them with the Galaxy and the dual camera's video is great for reaction shots with my kiddo. Samsung also brings a bunch of AI tricks into the camera both in the camera app and Samsung's image gallery. I wish there weren't two photo apps including Google Photos but here we are. Unlike the Pixel which gives you AI editing in Google Photos, Samsung keeps its Magic Editor software in the gallery. With Magic Editor, you can resize an object in your photo and move it around. You can erase the background entirely and replace it with something new. The phone will use AI to figure out what's happening in the foreground and match the new background appropriately. There is also a tool that adds more background to an image if you rotate it and end up with blank space. In practice, these are surprisingly useful. I like erasing spectators in the way when I am trying to see my kid on the field. The generative AI did a nice job without a heavy hand and the results usually looked natural enough. I hope Samsung doesn't go too much further into creating fake imagery. But the Galaxy S24 will affix a watermark to images that have been edited using AI. Here you can see some camera samples.
Don't let the smaller size of the Galaxy S24 fool you. Samsung has given this phone the same powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy processor found in the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's even overclocked a bit compared to the same processor in competitors' phones like the OnePlus 12, so it will out perform any other android you will find and any iphone 15 that isn't a pro model what can you do with that performance you can play games like call of duty mobile at the highest settings and still hit 60 fps you can run adobe lightroom and watch your photo edit happens in real time as you move the sliders. You can run Samsung DAX and open multiple windows on your monitor simultaneously. There's a ton of power packed into this phone. The only time I saw a real delay was when I used the new Google and Galaxy AI features. Holding down the home button to activate Google Circle to search took a few moments. In fact, I wasn't sure the feature was actually working at first because I wasn't patient enough waiting for it to start. Using Samsung's Galaxy AI features caused a similar delay when I asked the keyboard to rewrite my text messages, there was a long pause. When I recorded a speech using the voice recorder, it could not transcribe on the fly like my Pixel 8 can and there was a longer delay when I asked for a summary. It's too bad that Samsung has a performance leader that can beat a comparable iPhone but the new AI features are the only thing that slows it down. It's unclear if this will get any faster with software updates as the AI features are a mix of cloud services and on-device processing. There are bottlenecks with both. The Galaxy S24 Ultra technically outperformed the Galaxy S24 likely due to the extra RAM on board. The Galaxy S24 only ships with 8GB of RAM installed while the S24 Ultra comes with 12GB. In practice, it was hard to see a differences unless I held the phone side by side and then I noticed the Galaxy S24 Ultra finishing some tasks just a bit faster. The Galaxy S24 was still able to open multiple apps at once and handle gaming at the highest graphics levels, so I had no complaints about its performance. The Galaxy S24 has a battery that is only slightly larger than last year's Galaxy S23, but battery life has seen a significant improvement, giving me hours, more active screen time and lasting a full day with little trouble. On a normal day of use, the Galaxy S24 lasted until bad time with no trouble. On a day of heavy gaming and photography, I still lasted the evening with a quick top up while I was making dinner. I wish the Galaxy S24 would charge faster as things haven't improved since last year. I was able to get the battery to just over 50% in 30 minutes just like with my iPhone 15. The Pixel 8 charges a bit faster but cool phones like the OnePlus 12 can charge at extreme speeds and fill the battery completely in a half hour. There are plenty of adaptive modes to help you save battery life but good luck finding them in Samsung's terrible settings menu. You can just trust that the phone will do a good job like I did and occasionally turn on power saving from the quick settings panel which will work nicely. Even though the Galaxy S24 is the baby of the S24 lineup, it is still packed with power. If the larger sizes of the S24 Plus and then S24 Ultra don't appeal to you but you don't want to miss out on the latest and greatest that Samsung has to offer, then the S24 is still a good buy. Galaxy AI is one of the big selling points of the entire lineup and though I wouldn't quite say it's the reason to upgrade, some of the AI features do come in handy. I am mostly referring to circle to search and the generative photo editing tools but the live translate and interpreter features will also be handy in a specific situation. And while the camera hardware hasn't changed, the software behind the image processing has definitely been fine-tuned. It's better now, in my opinion, with less burned into your retinas, vividness and more realistic hues. There is also a lot to like about the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chip, especially power efficiency. Even though the S24 only has a 4000 mAh cell, it has great battery life, all things considered. Plus, the performance with Android 14 and One UI 6.1 is fast, snappy and responsive enough for pretty much anything you throw at it.
If you are due for an upgrade this year, the Galaxy S24 is a good phone on your shopping list. It's not a must-have upgrade if you already have a Galaxy S23, but if you are upgrading from an older model, there is a lot to like here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.